So we're going to continue to cover our box with yeah. uh, birch. So this is a basic pine box. You see them often. They're filled with narcissus or amaryllis in the winter. So what we're going to do, um, this is the plain side, is this beautiful bir birch bark comes right off of the trees. And this is an example oh, of it yeah. before we've cut it up so you can really see the intricacies. Can you buy it, it like that? You can buy it like this, okay. yes, at craft stores or online, uh -huh. various places. Or so. if you have a woodland with birch trees. After you know, have to look at the next trees. thunderstorm, right. go harvest your birch bark. So what we're going to do is we have these pieces pre-cut. And yeah. it takes a little bit of time to get them all measured out. But you need a super heavy-duty staple gun because okay. these things have some thickness to them. They do indeed. So, so we want to get in there and really bang those things in tight. Mm, yeah. Boy. You have to have the, the super strong staple gun. Yes. <laughs> it's like the kind you use for upholstery almost. Exactly. Right. So. Yeah. so when that's good and secure, and you know it's not going to go anywhere. And no glue. No glue. I mean, you could glue it, but we're not making a tank here. It's just a centerpiece. I am. <laughs> feel like I'm making a tank. Good, that's yeah, nice. Yeah, so it's good and secure. Now, well, and you're going like, to have... I like this with the back. It is, yeah, it's pretty. You can actually... the back or the front? Well, that's the thing. I trim this down, but sometimes it's nice to just maybe not be so... Yeah. ...so tight with it and yeah. break it so it's a little bit more organic. We can take these and... I like mine the way it is. ...leave it high, and then you can spill yeah. things over. I'm going to bring mine down just a little bit so it has... I'm probably making a mistake. I'm not listening to the master. No, there's no mistakes. <laughs> but you know, um, I'm just rounding the edges off a little bit so they don't look like they were... We're going to do a lot line. of stuff that drapes over it, too. Okay. So you, you want to leave room for okay. that stuff to fall in. So now what keeps the water in? Well, that's the thing about these type of boxes is that they are not watertight. So oh, what we use we is just, this is basic old black garbage That's a garbage bag, bag yeah, my up. favorite thing. But you want it to be long enough so that when you do fill it with water, you put the floral foam in, it doesn't leak through the right. cracks, and then you stay in your table. Okay. So we're going to then take floral foam. This is Oasis. Um, Oasis, just dry Oasis that we've soaked. We have a piece here that is ready to go. And this is many times heavier than when it's dry. Yeah, so you put that, snug that baby right in there. Okay, so uh, does it go this way? I put it that way, so yeah, it, yeah exactly. And then make sure oh. your plastic is up and around so you can see that. Oh, I missed it. Up. Yeah, it's a little tricky because you don't want plastic all over the place. No. Perfect. Okay. All right. And then we just take scissors and trim this so it's out of sight, out of mind. Okay. You don't have to worry about your table. And it's better clock. to trim it than to tuck it in because tucking it in, you might start to make leaks. Well, and you're also going to get a wad of plastic that you're going to have to deal with once you start putting in your flowers and your fruit. Right. So you don't want that extra okay. stuff. All right. So good. Trim that tight. Lovely. So that's all ready to go. Um, you can then even add a little bit more water. I don't you have, have mine. You can have the rest of this. Okay, one. they do. <laughs> Just so it's good and wet. Um, you want to touch it up, you know, every day or so to make sure there's plenty of moisture. Right. And then the next step we're going to do is start to, um, we're going to take fruit. We're going to start taking yeah. pick, wooden picks. You have some wooden picks, and we take this, these beautiful pears and just nice and tight, not all the way in, about halfway in, and we can start creating. Um, some speared fruit that we'll then add to the centerpiece. Okay, so use hard fruit. Use hard fruit, and pears tend to get soft quickly, so you want to make sure they're good and um, hard. Hard. But what about these gorgeous? And the persimmons, and persimmons. those don't even necessarily need picks because they're still yeah. on the branch, and they can fall over and create. Right. I've got artichokes here, which I can cut these big stems off, and I cut these off because that's going to take up so much real estate in the in the arrangement. Right. So I this is cotoneaster, right? Yeah, isn't that pretty? Oh, it's such a wonderful color berries. for this. And so I've been using uh, the, what do you call these um, beautiful golden roses? That is um, called capriccio, and you can see how big they oh, open up in the so buck over there. Amazing. And that's one called combo, that kind of camel oh, colored, which is really These are pretty. extraordinary. So, so you don't need a lot of flowers um, no. to make one of these amazing. Well, especially when they're that large. Oh my gosh, look at this. Yeah. It's almost covering up my pears. I might have to move my pairs. <laughs> That's the thing. You can oh. always rearrange. You can. 
so beautiful. So mine's very and, textural. And yours what, is very, what is this? So this is Andromeda. Oh, yeah. Keras Andromeda. And we've got the black berry privet berries. So there's a lot of textures going on here. I have some of the artichokes. You have the um, persimmons. Right. Some pears that we started to put in. So do you get a lot of your ingredients from the farm? I love to. Yeah. I wish I could get more in New York from the farm, but as much that can come right off the land, the better. Yeah. So, so um, it would be a lot of fun to go out and um, trim, do some good judicious pruning of your, uh, flower, of your flowering shrubs, exactly. right? Exactly. Right now. See, I like the hydrangeas That's in here, pretty, this like, beautiful autumnal hydrangea. Yeah. Do I dare use a chrysanthemum? Why not? You know, be democratic mm. about flowers. It's all in the application. Palm, palm. And you can make it gorgeous. Palm, palm. And has a nice texture, when, really, when you think about it. Am I, am I doing the, okay? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's stunning. I love how it's layered and grouped. Yeah, I like this a lot. Look how pretty, everybody. And it's not hard. I did it. If I can do it, you can do it. Yes. I always tell people that, but they always laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, you know, and you have to just do it and experiment and yeah. play around. It's supposed to be fun. Another pear. <laughs> so, um, oh, I thought I would use up all these flowers, but in fact, I have a lot left over to do several more boxes. You could do a lot. I, now, I, want, I want to make four of these for my table. Look at these that here, and we have the candles oh, yeah. all ready to go, so we bring oh, in the birch again. So just these are just slabs of birch, and yeah. we just took pillar candles and did a little Utterly beautiful. And with ribbon, ribbon and twine. And I like that contrast yeah. of the shiny with the yeah, textural. Yeah, I like that a lot. So satin ribbon. Yeah, just satin ribbon. And, then... and again, when a tree falls down or gets old in your yard, cut it into bark and, and rounds like that. Yeah. And yeah, you and a it. long table, you can do a whole display. Oh, you, know, you yes. wouldn't just have one. You could have smaller and uh, all kinds of tiered um, elements I going down. I see a down. hole right here. Oh, see, and you do. You keep going, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I could spend another 20 minutes yeah. on this one. So definitely. 